with so many different driving offences and such a range of penalties and punishments that go along with each, I thought it would be useful to do a video to summarise the sort of penalties that you might face for various different driving offences. But first of all, if you're new to me, I'm a barrister who helps you understand law, so make sure you subscribe so you receive further videos, especially if you hit the bell icon, that will send you a notification. And drop your questions in the box below, they might appear in a future video, or if not, I might answer the questions over on my sister channel at Black Belt Secrets, so make sure you subscribe there at the link below as well. So down to the offences, in a recent video I covered the use of a mobile handheld communications device whilst driving. Many of you in the comments were surprised to learn that this will apply even if you are sitting in stationary traffic because you are still using that mobile communications device whilst you are in charge of a vehicle. Many of you were also surprised to learn that if you are given a fixed penalty, it's not just the regular three points that you would get, but it would be six points with a £200 fine. Now, if you are already on six points and you get another six points, clearly you're going to top up to 12 points, which means you are likely to receive a ban. If the case goes to court, then the court will consider a ban at that point, and you could receive a fine of up to £1,000, or two and a half if you're driving a lorry or a bus. Another important point to note is that if you've only just acquired your driving license within the previous two years, then your license is going to be revoked if your case goes to court. One of the most well-known offences is obviously speeding, but many people don't realise the full extent of the punishment you can receive if you are caught speeding. An initial punishment, of course, would be three penalty points and a £100 fixed penalty fine, or you may be offered a speed awareness course instead. If the case goes to court, however, because your speed was even more excessive, then you could receive up to a £1,000 fine and the court will consider banning you. Many people also wrongly believe that there is a legal tolerance built into legislation, but this is not true. This is often referred to as the 10% plus 2 rule. There is no 10% plus 2 built into legislation. Instead, it is merely guidance by which the police may exercise discretion. For example, if you are driving at 35 miles an hour, this is obviously 10% of 30 plus 2. But this is only going to be the discretion of the police officers at that given time. They may well not exercise discretion, and indeed there are some areas of the country that don't apply this discretion, and you may even receive a fixed penalty for driving at 32, 33. Essentially anything over the set speed limit is going to be considered speeding. I have another video linked in the description where I talk about this in a little bit more detail about what tolerances are in general guidance around the country. Now we come on to careless driving, which is something that a lot of people don't realise that they might fall into with the odd bad habit here and there, will amount to careless driving. Careless driving, otherwise known as driving without due care and attention, is where the driving standard falls below what would be expected of a careful and competent driver. I'm sure most drivers at some point or another have experienced many of the following. Sometimes you might get a car really close up behind you, essentially trying to push you to go faster, particularly if you're in the outside lane. This is called tailgating and this can amount to careless driving, particularly if you are on the motorway and driving at high speeds. Alternatively, if the driver gets frustrated with you and then undertakes you on the left hand side of you, this is undertaking and this can also amount to careless driving. Even if you are eating, drinking, potentially smoking or vaping, I've covered this in another video as well, all of these things can amount to careless driving depending on the particular circumstances of the case. For example, comparing two scenarios against each other, if you are sitting in stationary traffic and you take a quick sip of a drink, this is much less likely to be considered careless driving than if you are doing the same thing whilst driving on the motorway at high speeds. And many people wrongly believe that you have to cause an accident or somebody has to be injured or there has to be some kind of collision for you to be charged with careless driving. But this is simply not true. If a police car were to pass you and see that you are eating or drinking whilst you are driving, they may well pull you over and charge you with careless driving. Now again, if the police think what you were doing was relatively minor, you may just receive the three points on your license and a hundred pound fine. However, taking a more extreme scenario, such as eating and drinking on the motorway, for example, you could receive up to nine penalty points on your license, a £5,000 fine, and the court will consider banning you 
if this case goes to court, which it's much more likely to do if it's a more serious scenario. And as an additional warning for careless driving, there is also an offence known as death by careless driving. Many of you will be familiar with death by dangerous driving, but I'll come on to that in a moment. If you were to cause death by careless driving, you could receive an unlimited fine, a driving ban of course, and up to five years imprisonment. So now we move on to dangerous driving, which is the more serious, of course, version of careless driving. This is where the driving standard falls far below what is expected of a careful and competent driver. Not only can dangerous driving include driving whilst unfit, perhaps through drink or drugs, but it can also include driving aggressively, driving with an unsafe load, driving whilst totally distracted. For example, if you are found to be watching a film on your iPad on the motorway, whilst you're driving at high speeds, this is likely to be considered dangerous driving because your attention is completely distracted by something entirely different. Examples of driving aggressively could be things such as brake testing. This is where a car in front of you slams on the brakes to determine whether or not you can stop without crashing into them. Other situations might be where a car is swerving in and out of lanes, cutting up various vehicles as it goes, driving at high speeds and generally being a real danger to lots of other road users. So the test as to whether or not the driving is dangerous driving is not only whether the standard falls far below what would be expected of a careful and competent driver, but also whether or not the standard of driving would be obviously dangerous to a careful and competent driver. So if you are careful and competent, you are driving around and you see something that is obvious to you that it is dangerous, then that would be an example of dangerous driving. But it isn't just the driving that a dangerous driving charge may be based upon. It very well could, depending on the circumstances, simply be that you are using your phone whilst you are driving. Even though using your phone is a separate offence by itself, this can also amount to dangerous driving. For example, if you are driving down the motorway and you are clearly visibly distracted looking at your phone instead of looking at the road and you're driving at high speeds, this is quite obviously dangerous. Even if you were deep in conversation with a passenger and looking at your passenger more than you are looking at the road, this may well amount to dangerous driving as well. Even such things as lighting a cigarette and changing a CD or changing the radio, all of these things still may constitute dangerous driving. If the case goes to court, again, you may well receive a driving ban, an unlimited fine, between three and 11 penalty points and up to two years in prison although this prison sentence will increase to 14 years for death by dangerous driving. As for drink driving, many people will be familiar with drink driving, but not necessarily familiar with the severity of the penalties that can ensue. Again, I have another video where I discuss in more detail the limits for drink driving. I'll link that in the description. And essentially the police can stop you at any time and demand a breath test if they suspect that you've been consuming alcohol recently. Typically, if you fail this roadside test, you'll be taken to the police station for a further test. And if the lower of these two tests confirms that you are above the prescribed limit, then you're going to be charged with drink driving. Now, whilst many of you are familiar that drink driving cases will be dealt with at the magistrate's court, this is not a cue for you to think that the punishments are not severe because not only can you receive an unlimited fine and a driving ban at the discretion of the magistrates, but you can also receive a prison sentence of up to six months, depending on the severity of the charge. And again, there's an increased penalty in the event of death caused by someone driving whilst unfit through drink or drugs. This increases the prison sentence to 14 years. Another offence many of you were surprised by in my earlier video was being drunk in charge. To be drunk in charge, you don't necessarily have to be in the vehicle, let alone driving it. You could simply have the keys in your pocket and you could be over the prescribed limit in the pub where your car is outside. If you are found in this situation and there is a real prospect that you are going to drive the car whilst over the prescribed limit, then you may well be charged with the offence of being drunk in charge of that vehicle. Again, many of you are surprised by the severity of the punishments that are available, which is up to two and a half thousand pound fine, a driving ban, and up to three months in prison, depending on the severity of the offence once again. If I were to mention the offence of drug driving to you, which is driving whilst unfit through drugs as opposed to drink, many of you will think I'm talking about cannabis, cocaine, and any of these kind of drugs, which would quite obviously create a separate offence of driving, whilst unfit through those drugs. 
However, there are also many legal drugs which have a prescribed limit. And in any event, if you are unfit to drive through any of those drugs, whether legal or not, then this may still amount to an offence of drug driving. Such legal drugs, whether over-the-counter or prescribed, might include many painkillers, antipsychotics, muscle relaxants. I will put a link to the list of these drugs in the description below so you can check those out for yourself. Because if you are found to be over these prescribed limits, then you are risking being charged with drug driving, even if you don't feel that it has affected your driving in any way. If you are over these limits, you are at risk of this offence. Drug driving, as you might well imagine, is considered to be a relatively serious offence, with a minimum of a one-year ban, an unlimited fine, and up to six months in prison. Not to mention that you will have a criminal record afterwards and your driving licence will show that you've been convicted of drug driving and it will remain on your licence for 11 years. Clearly this is going to affect your driving insurance and all sorts of other ramifications. This will have even wider effects, for example if you are required to drive for your employer or you're planning on travelling to the United States because you are likely to be denied a visa if you have a drug driving on your record. So all in all, many of these offences carry much more significant penalties than a lot of people realise. So I thought this video would be useful just to raise the awareness of how serious these offences are not just because they are dangerous both to the driver, passengers and other road users, but they can also have a very detrimental effect on the rest of your life because lots of these carry a criminal record and they will impact on every aspect of your life. So I hope this video has been useful to you and remember, stay humble and subscribe.